Hello, beautiful people. This is Galita, and today I want to talk to you about the most surprising secret of really liking yourself and why it's important. So I work with many people and I'm investigating my own life and own happiness and how to come out of the depth of despair and frustration and to try to blossom in this world that can be so full of contradiction. And there's one thing that we are all meeting and is actually the core, core secret of all happiness, of all fulfillment, of all flow, of all things. And it's not only to listen to intuition. It is actually what we call shadow work. So shadow work is a word that was um, coined by Jung, the, 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 the psychiatrist. I love him. And I discovered everything what he was saying after I already learned about it from other sources. But in Western culture and in our really, really latest, latest development of understanding, he's the one who brought understanding of shadow work, which is basically the, the part of us in our own psyche that we are denying or we are sleeping or we are rejecting and we don't want it. And then it goes into the shadow. So one of the things that you can see that you start to work with your own shadows and start to develop your own life into more light, you can see that when a person, so, so he said, confronting the shadows um, stop you from blaming others. So I see that as a very strong indication when are we dealing with shadows, when someone triggers us when someone makes us be so mad and so angry we usually say she is so lazy or pathetic or stupid and these words that we blame in others usually are showing us the shadows inside ourselves that we don't accept so ooh, some people you can see already in your surrounding if you think about some people you know some people are very conscious about it and they are taking their own behavior and their own triggers into evolution to take themselves to the next level. And they are practicing, practicing this surprising secret. Or if you can see that some people staying in the blaming game and they, they think that the things that bother them is outside of themselves. And we are all, we are all basically both. But we want to start to explore our, 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 our shadow work. So what does it mean, shadow work? So um, the other thing that, that Jung said, he said the sole purpose of human existence is to kindle the light of meaning in the darkness of mere being, which I just love. Because what it means, it means that we are accepting or acknowledging the fact that we are made of both we live in this dimension that can be dark and shadowy and split from the wholeness and there is a light part of us and we understand a very very strong spiritual um, uh, concept is that bringing the light into our daily life into our personality and this is also a very kabbalistic uh, uh, knowledge from the ancient of Kabbalah, and it is also in Taoism, it is also in the Hindu, it's, it's actually appearing in every ancient knowledge of life, this shadow work. I personally started to learn it through the shamanism, realizing that we can heal ourselves by addressing the shadow, uh, by doing soul retrieval and retrieving parts of our soul that freaked out and left uh, in a client or in myself. Um, and that shadow work is the is the um, is the is the beginning and the ending of everything. So it's very easy to say that that this is the most important, but it also takes a lifetime to do. So I would like for just a little bit explain what does it mean. Now it says here in this in this clip it says that our consciousness is ten percent and our subconscious ninety percent. 
actually, according to the Kabbalah, the way they look at the light and the evolution of the soul with the whole, you know, tree of life, and it's very, very sophisticated uh, spiritual uh, uh, technology, they say that our consciousness is actually 1%. Our whole reality, everything we see, can touch and feel and sense and listen to around us is only 1%. And our subconscious mind and our connection to the invisible, this is where the 99% of the true existence is. So woohoo, let's stretch our mind around that. But what does it mean in our practical? In our practical, it means that everything that stands in your way to happiness or to wealth, or to joy with people, or to love in relationship. Everything that has full light in it. Light is, is a very high vibration of unconditional love and creativity and joy and kindness. It's, that's what we are all, where we come from and where we would like to bring ourselves and our earth back to through this amazing game and experiment of coming to earth. Um, and in the, um, what did I want to say? In, 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 this, in this highest light, there is a part of us that can and want to, part of our soul, want to come and be in our reality here, in our personality. But here we have other challenges. We have limitation of the body. We have the monkey mind. We have the, the, the unconsciousness of what's happening to us. So everything, everything that you need in order to open those blocks to this high level, joyful experiences are all in the, in the, in the unconscious mind. Um, and this is in psychology and in science and also in the mystics and spirituality. So what happens is that everything we need, everything that is brilliant and everything that is absolutely horrific and blocking us from expanding ourselves is in our subconscious mind so i want to talk about shadow because i know that many of us are afraid to look in the shadow um some some of us like me with a little bit cancer and scorpionic uh, emotional life like to dive into the underworld sometimes not by choice sometimes life is commanding that but the investigation that brought to me this work absolutely liberated myself and my life. And this has become my way of being. So let me tell you an example. So this week I had a very big challenge. Let's not start crying, but a very big challenge that is so painful. You must know it because sometimes when we have so much pain, it feels if we're giving it a human picture, it feels like we are being cut in our, in, our, in, in, in our body. It's so painful. And I wanted to go and look and meet that shadow so I can breathe or have a better idea of what to do or how to address this issue. And this, it's a process that I know very well. I do that with people, I do it with groups. I do it for many years. I write about that. Um, and what's amazing, every time when I will do this work, there is always going to be more. It, it's almost never ending. That's why I'm saying it's a lifetime of, of, uh, of work. But it's also taking the biggest uh, block that we came here or that the earth is and piece by piece turning it into the light. So one of the techniques of working with shadows is to go into our own mind into our own mindfulness mind and enter into our subconscious and uh, if you know me then you know that i like to do that with a shamanic drum and with the power of sound and voice and that brings us into really the deepest aspects of ourselves uh, the parts that you the only way to reach it is through uh, hypnosis or through trance. Actually, it's pretty similar to those both things. Even that you are um, uh, in a meditation, very deep meditation place. Uh, and with practice, you can do that anywhere. With practice, when you start to know how to go into your own subconscious, you can be standing in the bus 
and go partly into that process and, and access any part of yourself. It's amazing. It's also where the source of all creativity comes from. Um, so I would, um, now I was not sure that I'm recording, but I hope I'm recording. <laughs> okay. So, um, so I went into meditation and I was aware, sometimes we can be really specific, sometimes we can be more general, but the, the question is, um, which part do we want to talk to? And I thought, I feel like a victim. I feel victimized. I feel sorry for myself. So this is, this is something why it's not so easy to make a shadow work because you have to be honest. And it's not always pretty because you know the shadow will be, if this is pretty, then the shadow work will be uh, ugly. Uh, and uh, wisdom will be stupid. Oh, nobody wants to feel stupid. Nobody wants to feel ugly, but we have both. And if you really want to shine, you have to own both. That's the whole amazing thing about becoming conscious about this ability of us to go and retrieve things from the shadow or work together with the shadow or renegotiate something with the shadow. So I decided to go into a specific kind of meditation where I wanted to meet this part of myself that felt uh, victimized. Because, and this is also something that in psychology they call subpersonality. Uh, and it's also in shamanism when you're going and retrieving a part that is stuck somewhere. It's stuck somewhere in your being. So you want to be brave, but there is a part of you that is so afraid and so uh, horrified that it will not be um, uh, corresponding. So yeah, this actually this this beautiful art that we are seeing on the wall. This is this is a very interesting expression about how scary the shadow can be when when if you look at it in reality, it's not that scary. So let's see if there is another image. Oh, this I love this art. <laughs> another image of showing um, a woman living together with her shadow in peace and harmony. And this is part of the part of the work. When you start to become the, the leader and the mother and father of your own shadow, you are a complete person. And this is also something that Hume said. It's, uh, you don't want to have, you want to be complete. It's not about just being happy or just being one side. Being complete is to owning all of that you are. Because when you do that, you like yourself. When you like yourself, you can uh, embrace yourself, support yourself, uh, be part of, uh, of, of the, the movement to love in everything that you are. Um, and that makes you a big, and that's wonderful. Um, so when I went into my own subconscious, so the way, that, the way that our psyche works is with pictures, it's with images, it's with symbols. Uh, sometimes we can hear, and sometimes we can see, and sometimes we can just sense, and sometimes we can know. This is like the four... Uh, clairvoyance, uh, clair uh, abilities, which every person has. Um, and I really recommend that you will do and start to explore this work because it makes you more creative. It makes you uh, uh, look at life in such exciting way. I cannot imagine living uh, only looking at life from one angle. It makes you so rich when you are able to go and look at life from the lowest part of you or to look at life on the highest part of you. It's just like, woohoo, exciting. So I went, and it is a bit, you know, I have to, I have to put all of my bravery on me to go there. And I'm, and I'm taking this road to, to thinking and in an elevator to go and meet this part of me that is so victimized and feeling so powerless that, that I, I had this issue that was like too, too hard to bury. Um, uh, and I come into a place, and of course your subconscious self, your, your, the universe, will, will, will give it to you in pictures that mean something to you. No, there's a communication between your subconscious mind and between your conscious mind. And I, uh, I came into a place that for me, it is, you know, gooey and dark 
and clinical. It's almost looked like a cellar of a, of a mental institution. It was really not nice. But in that part, when you go into that part, you want to stay in connection to yourself and to what you're doing and to have that ability to look at it because only that's so incredible just by being there and saying i come here to observe to witness and to be uh communicating with whatever i see and i will accept whatever i see you are already opening thousand doors of light that can come to you so then i'm going in there and i see that the rooms are are uh, kind of the door is kind of a door like a garage and it is halfway and from all of these darkest places I know that my person the person I'm looking for that I need to talk to that needs to be seen by me is there and I'm going there and I see one of the most horrific <laughs> now maybe I'm scaring you too much but it's all taking 30 seconds a minute I, I see a person that is of course um, yeah, when you see it, then I go like, ah, of course, of course, of course, that, that's how it will appear. That was uh, wounding itself with, with, with the self-torture. And its whole being kind of like was a little bit mad looking and it was not present. Um, um, and I just had to breathe and to go like, okay, I see the most sad situation in the world, sad ability in the world, but because I know what comes next especially when you go so deep into so dark shadows. Some shadows are not so bad. So you're following this. Then I, um, uh, I take that person out and I invite them to come with me. And I'm taking them into an outside, which was still a very dark, but a garden. Um, and I start to, to create a communication between me and that being. And I, I ask, what is it that you want? And the first thing is that it needs to come into consciousness because it's, it was like the person had, didn't have a light on. So I, I communicate and I use my own big self, the part of me that is seeing the total picture that has the wisdom and the love. And I bring it into this meeting with this shadow part. And... I start to have a communication and she, she starts to look into my eyes and suddenly there is somebody there and we're starting to, to I follow what she needs and what she wants uh, and I look at what she is doing and what she's needing. It's a communication. It's basically a focused attention and a focused intention of me bringing her relief uh, and love and see what happens. And it's always so spectacularly beautiful. Uh, she also didn't have hair, so so she started to look more with the human eyes looking at me. And then she opened her head and there is this thick layer of a human came out. And this whole package of woundedness and, and scars and all kind of horrific things I will spare you. Uh, this, this, this shell comes out and she put it out there and then there is a fire. And slowly she starts to become a person I can talk to. And then she has a pony hair and I can see uh, a very young and bright girl, um, new in the world. And she's wearing a white crisp shirt. Uh, and she's a very neat, <laughs> a very neat kind of a person. Um, and she's very young and very interested and eager to learn. Uh, and she's looking at, at what is becoming in our surrounding. And she has a book where she's writing stuff and it becomes kind of a building and a hotel and she wants to learn and she wants to manage. And, and I give her all of what she needs in order to evolve from being stuck in the hellhole kind of sub-personality into her fuller potential and this is an example and that takes 10 minutes 
if you have fun with it, it can take longer because sometimes you can go and have experiences that are more than just transformation. You can learn from them. Oh my God, there's so much to experience. But just to help acknowledge and take some parts of me that was stuck in something and to release it. Oh my God. That is so nice. What did I did afterwards is that I did the opposite, is that I, I took the same journey because I was already in it and I went up and then I went into the highest and very brilliant version of my being, which is also part of all of us, and brought that into contact with the lowest part that I just met. So why am I telling you all of this? Because this work, with shadows, which I'm going to do more of uh, um, for you. Uh, until now, I was doing it with groups or with individual people. And for a while, I was looking, how do I make it accessible for people? Because if you can do yourself, every time that you have uh, a clash where you feel ugly or you feel uh, uh, undermined or you feel scared or any, anything that is blocking you and you know how to do this shadow work, and to bring yourself into the communication with that part of you that is stuck or asleep or ignored or anything, you can heal yourself, heal your life only by using your own inner voice and using your, your being and consciousness. So I wanted to say that shadow work is something that you can start doing just by realizing that you are meeting a shadow and a shadow is not an enemy uh, it's something that is literally in the shadows of your own consciousness and you want to bring it forward you want to 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 bring it into light and when you take all of your shadows and you will see it's going to be a lifetime i already made like more than two thousand sub personalities it's already going beyond me. I meet the collective. I meet ones of my mother. I meet ones of, 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 of my ancestors. All the time that our world is unhealed and it's still in evolution and still that there is suffering, there's going to be parts. To it. And when you work with a lot of a lot of shadows and bring yourself into self-love to all of the parts of you, that's the spiritual practice that brings us into enlightenment. But if enlightenment is not your goal, because it doesn't have to, and you just want to get yourself in the world, you just want to be happy, you just want to be healthy, this is enlightenment for this lifetime. To get yourself into a level where you're happy and satisfied and uh, enjoying life and feeling that you live with purpose and that you're contributing, that is the highest achievement ever. But you have to start with you. You have to get to know you. And you have to uh, do this work of addressing your shadows, working with your light, and bringing more of the biggest light into your own personality so you can shine out of your personality into the world. And that's very exciting. So that's what I wanted to tell you about what is the surprising secret of really liking yourself. Because when you get that done, when you start to understand how it works. You can do that before you go to sleep. You can do that with every person. You can do that with yourself. And more that you expand self-love, everything goes into place. And there is flow and synchronicity and support and wisdom and groundedness. And your light can shine. And when you do that, your soul is so happy and your personality can relax and evolve your ego will not be dominating so much and this is the journey my friend what else can i say this is the essence of everything so we're starting with this shadow work uh, i'm very excited i that i'm going to be doing it online I'm going to make it very affordable and every month we are going to look at one part so in the next one we are going to be working discussing renegotiating with our inner critic and uh, that will be another, um, another video I will do about that. So thank you so much. I hope that was useful. I hope you are inspired to see that you don't have to be oh, 
are sitting down under your shadows, shadowing your view, your heart, and your expression. You have to work with it one little piece at a time, and you will see it's going to become a second nature to you. So I wish you all success. This is all I wanted to say. Please let me know if you are working with your shadow in any way that you are already discovering. If you have a tip for what you do in order to overcome some of your uh, own shadows, if you can find something that you don't love about yourself and to turn it into something that you accept about yourself, then you like about yourself, then you can really love it uh, in evolution. Just let me know. I would like to hear all about that and to see us all expanding. So, namaste to you. And I see you next time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop it now.